PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. Welcome to another edition of PAC TV Community News. I'm Larry King, and PCN officially welcomes Julie Thompson to the anchor team. Hi, Julie. Hi, Larry. Thank you. It's great to be part of this local news program. I'm happy to be part of telling our community stories. And I'm happy, too, that you're here. Well, tonight we bring you local stories about a baseball team season kickoff, an annual town meeting committee, South Shore water monitoring, and a Cub Scout derby. That's right, Larry. We also have some news from the theater at Plymouth Plantation, but we begin the show with an art auction preview from Duxbury. The Duxbury Cultural Council is holding a fundraising art auction in order to raise the monies needed to fund local grants for the community. PCN's Brian Sullivan caught up with the council to hear more about the upcoming event. On March 29th, the Duxbury Cultural Council will be hosting a springtime art auction at the Duxbury Senior Center. We caught up with some of the people involved with the fundraiser at the town's art complex museum to find out more. The goal of the auction is to raise additional funds so that we can um, grant more than the 10 or 12 grants that we're allowed or have money to give. And that gives us more to appropriate to um, some of these grants that we receive. Local sculptor Craig Bloodgood is the contemporary curator at the Art Complex Museum. I'm also a member of the Duxbury Cultural Council and a participating artist in this uh, auction. Um, now we are still looking for artists to participate and there are um, a number of ways you can do it. You can donate your piece outright to the Cultural Council which means that they'll use all their money for, for their funding of, of their other groups. Uh, you can actually set a minimum bid on your piece if you'd like to do that. And you can also share uh, the amount of money that you get 50-50 if you'd like with the Cultural Council. So there's a lot of ways to do this and it's a chance to uh, get your artwork out there seen by a lot of people who are interested in buying art and uh, that can always lead to other things, better things. Now some of the artwork we see here at the Art Complex Museum in Duxbury is just a taste of what we might be seeing at the upcoming auction at the end of the month. Sally Dean Mello is the museum's educational coordinator and a contributor to the art auction. I'm also one of the artists donating to the event and the purpose is to get more people involved just like the middle school kids have gotten involved and their work is hanging in the museum right now. I'm going to be doing a pet portrait commissioned by the person that buys the auction piece. It's a great opportunity for artists to participate as well as raise money for programs that we would like to fund but are very short changed by the state. The auction will begin at 7 and end at 9. We are very excited. Tickets are $25 per person. We will have hors d'oeuvres and a cash bar. Tickets are available at the Senior Center or at West Winds Bookshop and we would invite anybody that likes good art to come and bid on the items that will be there. In Duxbury, I'm Brian Sullivan, PAC TV Community News. The town of Kingston, under the recommendation of the Town Government Implementation Committee and with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, has created a town meeting committee. This committee is charged with promoting town meeting participation and civic democracy by conducting educational and voter registration assemblies and forums. They work to establish community relationships and communication in preparation for and attendance at the special and annual town meetings for this year and years to come. Well, we're going to be focusing right now on promoting town meeting participation, and that's going to be through education involving the different demographics of our community, the recreation, the seniors, students, parents, um, and getting advance notice of the warrant and the motions out to our citizens prior to town meeting. And also to provide support services, the senior transportation to town meeting and voting, daycare at town meeting, as well as uh, food fundraisers at town meeting, which will be fun to have. 
The committee was created to incorporate all of the town's voter population. On average, 112 voters attend the annual town meeting, and these 112 voters spend approximately $38 million in just a few hours. I feel that when you've got millions of dollars being decided by such a few number of people that come to town meeting, I wanted to participate to give my ideas how I think we can improve attendance and expedite the process. One way to educate is the way of a mock annual town meeting. The committee uses the mock meeting to highlight the process and rules of an annual town meeting, as well as to increase voter involvement. Kingston's annual town meeting starts April 5th at 9 a.m. at the Kingston Intermediate School. We're able to reach out to a lot of different parents, um, kind of the younger kids demographics with uh, through the sports groups, KYSO, things like that. Um, I've been thoroughly involved around town the last few years. I've been attending town meetings for many, many years. Um, and it's an important thing. I think uh, more people need to show up. I have vested interest in this. I, I approached Jana Wallace over a year ago trying to see if we could come up with some way to make people more interested in attending town meetings. I mainly became interested in it because of my children. I wanted them to develop a sense of civic awareness that not only comes from just coaching and being involved and showing up on the field, but also knowing your town government and knowing where your tax dollars are spent, how they're spent, and knowing that you have a say in that. So it's very important to me to make sure people understand what town meeting is and why it is so important. As we get closer to spring and summer, we get closer to a new baseball season, and the Plymouth Pilgrims collegiate baseball team is ahead of the game already. They recently held a kickoff event at the Cabby Shack in Plymouth to get their people excited for their second season in Plymouth. The goal tonight really is to introduce our community to our owners. Uh, these are people that if you live in Plymouth, you know. In the first position, the guy who can do the 100 yard dash in seven flat. Gabby Freedy! Uh, everybody knows who Dan Chaunessy is or knows who the Cabby Shack. And we want to let people know that this is really, truthfully, their team. This is Plymouth's team, right down to our ownership group. Mr. Dan Uh, one, one of the reasons I got involved in it as one of the owners is to give back to this community as a small business owner. Um, I think we, uh, all the owners themselves have the same common goal is to give back to the community for, for them giving us their business and uh, to a nonprofit organization that with any proceeds that we do make will be given back in scholarships, helping youth programs, baseball, um, soccer, football programs. Let's hear it. Mr. Chris Patchell! We're looking forward to really having, really building this organization and, and making it one of the strongest ones in the league because Plymouth is one of the best locations in the, in the, in the New England Collegiate Baseball League already. So, um, you know, we're going to build off of that. We're 10 miles from the Cape. Uh, we got a lot of scouts here at our games. And so tonight, that's our goal here, to say hi to everybody, kick the season off. Introducing Donald! The product we have is a sensational value, sensational product, and you know, it's, a, it's the best family entertainment that you're going to find in Plymouth, for sure, especially after 5 o'clock. It's entertaining. It's baseball that you can get for $2. It's a, it's a great experience, and it's something that we want everybody to say at the end of the night. Not only was that a great game, but I'm definitely coming back. Flooding in rivers and streams can be a major problem on the South Shore. Monitoring devices were developed to give critical information to communities to help prepare for incoming water levels. Stream gauges are used for flood warning, infrastructure planning, environmental protection, and recreational needs. Funding to keep these critical monitoring devices has traditionally been split between federal and state governments. Now the U.S. Geological Service is trying to find alternative ways to pay for these meters like 
like the one at the Jones River in Kingston. In Plymouth, the water table is actually higher because these, because of that water use combination, right? They're public water supply, but private septic, and that's what explains we how the water table works. We do hydrologic studies and also uh, operate the stream gauging and observation well networks uh, for the state of Massachusetts. Stream gauges are uh, stations where the water level of streams and the flow in the stream uh, is measured on a continuous basis, uh, and they're used for flood warning, for uh, planning of infrastructure, uh, like bridges and, and dams, and, uh, and used for environmental uh, protection, uh, for recreational users who want to know how much flow is in a stream, if they're going to kayak or uh, canoe, and uh, they're part of the, the nation's uh, data infrastructure, just like weather stations uh, and uh, other similar types of, of, uh, of data collection efforts by the uh, by states and the federal government. What's done is that the water level of the river is measured continuously and uh, periodically on the order of every four or five weeks. We we go out and we measure the flow uh, with current meters. Uh, they're acoustic Doppler current meters uh, with no moving parts, but we measure the flow and we relate that flow to the water level or to the stage of the river. And we do that, uh, that set of operations under all flow conditions from low to high, and we establish a relation between river stage or level and river flow. And uh, that relationship is, is then used to uh, uh, basically determine the flow on a continuous basis from our continuous stage uh, data. For uh, public supply wells of, of uh, municipalities, but also uh, public supply wells for schools and condos and pumping for agriculture, uh, all kinds of uses. Um, and it's one of the richest or the largest aquifers uh, in southern New England. You want to go to ma.water.usgs.gov, G-O-V, uh, and uh, click on the water data uh, banner to the left side of the website. The Pinewood Derby is a long-cherished tradition of Cub Scouts. Pack members work together with their parents to design and build wooden model derby cars and then race them in competitions. We caught up with a Cub Scout pack from Duxbury on race day to see all the fun. Everybody take a quick stand up. Let me see if you all got the t-shirts on. Well, this is a Cub Scout Pack 1776 Pinewood Derby event. It's a big event that happens throughout the nation. The Pinewood Derby's been in uh, Boy Scouting, uh, Cub Scouting, under Boy Scouting, for 61 years. I think I saw some sparks off of one of those tires. These guys are moving. Uh, each scout gets a block of wood, pine wood, and they can either carve it with uh, machinery now. At one time, they actually carved it with a pocket knife, and they put uh, wheels on the uh, cars. The wheels are held in with uh, one inch, one and a half inch nails, and then they can paint the design any way they want, and then uh, they race them on wood or metallic tracks, and uh, it's a great, great event. Uh, it's been going on, like I said, for 61 years, and uh, today is our day, and every single uh, den uh, throughout the nation participates in Pinewood Derby. It's a tradition that's been around for a long, long time. I think we're ready with heat six and nine. Well, this is my third year doing the Pinewood Derby. Um, my car right over there. It's blue and it um, says USA on it. It's a pretty d uh, aerodynamic shape. My car weighs five ounces and I hope I win this year. I've been involved in scouting now for just about 35 years. Uh, my children are both scouts and they love it. And uh, by the turnout today and the turnout last night for our movie, uh, scouting is going strong.
Atomic States of America is a film made by people who have lived through the Three Mile Island nuclear disaster. The documentary is about reactor host communities around the U.S. and the truths and myths of nuclear power. PCN spoke with Eric Epstein, one of the people who have made it his life's work to tell people about the nuclear industry at a showing of the film at Plymouth Plantation's movie theater. It's an important film to watch. It's a documentary. It is a, uh, in my mind, one of the few films that captures the history of how this country um, approached atomic energy and also how this country regulates nuclear and how we don't do such a good job of addressing questions and concerns local communities raise. It's not an anti-nuclear film or a pro-nuclear film, but I think it's an important historical document to understand the evolution of atomic energy in America. Our energy future. Atomic States of America are based on a, is based on a book uh, um, that was written uh, relating to the town of Shirley and the uh, you know tragic uh, incidents of cancer that they had there, a rare form of cancer. And you know my understanding is the people that uh, directed the movie, um, Don Argo and uh, Sheena Joyce, uh, then began to expand the movie after they saw that the, you know the story was more than just um, one local community. see at the movie I think is really important is a history of the evolution of atomic energy in this country. Um, the lack of any questioning about having a nuclear power plant sited in your community and then having four different communities kind of have a Rip Van Winkle moment where they woke up not, you know, they were prodded or pushed to examine um, what was happening. So the four communities are, are Brookhaven National Lab in Long Island, um, then Indian Point in uh, New York, which is about 35, 34 miles from New York, um, Braidwood, which is in Godly, Illinois, and then Three Mile Island. about the tritium at one of the, their open houses at the um, town hall, and the response to my question by a nuclear regulatory commissioner was a hand wave, tritium, don't worry about it. People need to wake up and say that we are not being protected, we have to protect ourselves. Plymouth Cinema, located at the Plymouth Plantation Visitor Center, is considered to be a local hidden gem for foreign and independent films on the South Shore. On Saturday, April 5th, Plymouth Cinema will be hosting an exclusive meet and greet and Q&A with Academy Award-winning actor Chris Cooper, preceded by a screening of his most recent film, August, Osage County.
The evening will be moderated by WGBH's Emmy Award-winning executive editor and host for the arts, Jared Bowen, and will serve as the kickoff for a 30-day Kickstarter fundraising campaign. The Kickstarter goal is $48,000, and the purpose is for turning their hidden gem of a theater into a fully digital and updated movie theater experience. Currently, the Plymouth Cinema uses traditional movie film projector with real film, which is becoming harder to come by, as most films are filmed now in the digital digital format. The need to upgrade to the new HD format is critical. Tickets are $35 and can be purchased through the Plymouth Theatre website or by calling 508-746-1622 extension 8346. The program begins at 6 p.m. and the doors open at 530. Town Talk this week comes from Kingston Town Administrator Robert Fennessy. Hi, uh, and welcome back to the town of Kingston's town administrator's office. Uh, I have a few things to update the townspeople on. Um, the first is I want to welcome Lori Zinkovich, who is our new assistant to the town administrator town and the Board of Selectmen. Uh, she came on board on March 12th and we're very happy to have her here after doing an exhaustive search to replace Nancy Howlett. So if you're in the area and you want to stop in and say hello, that'd be great and you'll be seeing her around town uh, over the next several weeks and, and for a long time to come. Uh, a few things I want to update you on, the on April 5th at 9 a.m., which is a Saturday, is our annual town meeting. It's a chance for you to come up and take part in your government uh, and look at the articles that are that are being proposed uh, also the budget will be set on that day or shortly thereafter so it, if, you, if you haven't been to a town meeting, I encourage you to, to do so. It's basically the purest form of government that there is. So where one vote is for one person, and everybody has a right to speak and to vote. So, so I hope to see you there. Uh, also on that note, on April 26th, which is a Saturday, is the annual town election, and we'll be seeing the campaigns kick into full swing in the next uh, few weeks with signs going up and, and some uh, forums that will be held uh, regarding the election. So get out to vote on the 26th. On April 12th, which is a Saturday, these are all Saturdays, uh, the annual rabies clinic will be held at the Kingston Animal Shelter, which is behind the town hall here. And the cost for rabies vaccination is $10. Uh, and if you bring a dog and you want to have the dog's nails trimmed, it's only $5. So for $15, you can come in and get the rabies vaccination and have your dog leaving looking great. So, so we hope you come by and, and get, get that done. And one final thing I'd like to bring up, which may, may sound benign to most people, is our credit rating. Our credit rating was recently elevated from AA to AA+. And there's only one credit rating higher than that, which is AAA, and that's something we're working towards. Uh, what does that mean to the people? It means that we save hundreds and maybe thousands and tens of thousands of dollars uh, when we go out to bid on on things that need to be built by bonds and so forth so it's a it's a great accomplishment for our financial team here at town hall i want to uh, thank them uh, and also the board of selectmen for for getting us to that level and again we're still striving to get that triple a rating but there's very very few communities that have that so so i'm very pleased uh, uh, the way things have gone in the past year and, and and that kind of wraps up for my office for this week and I hope to see you in a few weeks and at town meeting so have a good rest of the winter thank you thanks for watching PAC TV community news replay times are listed at PACTV.org click on the PCN logo to watch each complete edition or individual story See us on YouTube by searching for the PAC TV Community News Channel. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to receive previews each week with links to all of our stories. And thanks for watching and join us next week for another edition of PAC TV Community News.